We are now going to illustrate versioning by delay through basically a very, very simple example. So imagine that a book is released and you can buy it when it is released or when it is discounted later on. As an example, Harry Potter cues. Imagine the consumers discount the future by a factor of 50%. That means they value reading later at 50% of reading today. Uh, so though, if they knew that they had to delay, that's what they would uh, forego. They also prefer paying later. So basically their surplus is uh, reduced by 50% by delaying. Uh, but at the time, they're going to make transactions based upon what they value at the time they get to purchase. The seller can set a price for its initial release, and it also can set a discounted price later on. And the simple assumptions we'll have is that there are two types of buyers, one with a willingness to pay of $30, and one sort of buyer with a willingness to pay of $20, and the population is divided 50-50 between the two. Finally, books cost $5 to produce. Okay. If you didn't have versioning, what would the price would you charge? Well, we can work that out. You could charge any price from zero to infinity, of course. Uh, but the two natural candidates given this market are either to price at $30 to the high types. You'd sell only to those high types. So you would sell to half the market only. But you would receive a margin of $30 minus $5, so that is $25 for those. So your profits will be $12.50. You could also price at $20. You'd cover the entire market in that case. But your margin would drop to $15. But that's also what you would do. So in this particular example, you would choose to price at $15. What if you opened versioning? That is, a different price today versus later on. Well, the price later on the idea is that you're going to have the consumers sort themselves into the high willingness to pay and low willingness to pay consumers, and the low willingness to pay consumers will be purchasing later on. Their value at that time of reading is the same as it was now, which is $20. So you may as well charge that to them. Yes, they've had to wait, but they've also had to wait to pay, so their surplus doesn't change. What about the price now? Well, the price now has to satisfy what we call an incentive constraint. The high types have to be willing, without telling you so, that they're a high type, to be willing to purchase now rather than later. That means their surplus from buying now, which is on the left-hand side of this inequality, $30 versus buying now, has to be greater than their surplus from waiting and buying then. And they would earn, they'd pay the P later price, but their total surplus would be 50% of what it would be today. We substitute a price of $20 for the later price that's anticipated by very sophisticated high type buyers. Then uh, their expected surplus later on is a half of $10, which is $5. Doing some rearranging. We can see that the price now has to be less than the surplus today minus the surplus tomorrow. That is less than $25. So, so long as you charge $25 or less, the high types will purchase today. And so you'll get self-selection. So the profit, you'll get $25 minus $5 from the high types. That is a margin of $20. And you'll get a margin of $15 from the low type. So if you don't discount the future as a seller the same way the buyers do, your total profits are going to be $17.50. You sell to everybody on average for a margin of $17.50 as opposed to half the customers before for a much higher margin of $25. So you're much better off.